the day. Hello, everyone. Yep, we're good. So we are live. I'm going to go ahead and add the topic for today really quick. See. Okay, awesome. Hi, everyone. So my name is Caitlin. I'm your MC for today. Welcome to today's Wolfpack chat. On today's Wolfpack chat, we are all about academic resources. I love me some good academic resources. So as you can see, the topic for today is academic success. Specifically, we're going to talk about how and where you can find those resources to get help for your coursework when you need it. So I hope you guys are going to stay through us for the duration of this Wolfpack chat. These are organized in kind of two separate segments. So first we're going to have two guests on from the Writing and Speaking Center as well as the Tutoring Center. And then second, we will have a guest from our Advising Center to give you guys lots of great information about all of those locations. Um, so a little bit about myself. Actually, before I do that, I wanted to let you guys know as we move through this, if you have questions, please feel free to enter them in the, oh shoot, sorry, I forgot to pin the comment. There we go. Okay, I actually got it right now, sorry. This is only my second Instagram Live, so I'm still figuring it out. Okay, redo, rewind. So today, as we're going through this, if you have questions, please feel free to use the comment box. So if you, as we're going through, if you need questions, answer, post it as a comment. We have a lot of people behind the scenes who are here to help today to make sure you guys get the answers that you need. Um, we're doing this for you. We wanna make sure that you guys know that we're here for you. We wanna get all your questions answered. So please use that comment box. Stay with us for the duration of this. Again, the topic for today is academic success, okay? So um, a little bit about me as your host today. I am, my name is Caitlin McKinney. I am from Admissions and Records. I am the Student Systems Services Specialist at Admissions and Records. So a lot of what I do has to do with my Nevada, which I know you guys are all experts on by now. Um, some of it has to do with Web Campus, just kind of making sure that we're coordinating with other departments, say IT, um, or even like the Advising Center, um, just to make sure that you guys are taken care of as students. So that's a little bit about myself. Um, we'll get going here in just a couple minutes. If you guys um, want to get a you know a refreshment or grab a snack, um, we'll typically these go for maybe about a half hour to 45 minutes. So we have tons of great information that we're going to pack in for you today. We'll have a couple tours, um, lots of questions that are going to be answered. So if you have anybody that you know um, that's wanting to kind of um, get some information on the tutoring center, or the writing and speaking center, or the advising center. Um, please, please, please let them know to have them join now, and then um, we'll get started here in just a minute or so. Um, I hope that you guys had a wonderful three-day weekend. I know it's kind of it's hot out there today. It's cold. Um, it's a little bit smoky for those of you who are here in Reno. So I hope that you guys were able to kind of have some time to yourself. Um, reconnect and, and get ready for you know the next couple weeks here that we have. Um, we are going to get started here in just a sec with our guests from the Writing and Speaking Center as well as the Tutoring Center. So like I said, we're going to have some tours up for you and lots of lots of great information about both of those places. So we're just getting ready to bring our first guests on right now. We are going to have Maureen McBride and Marsha Urban on to talk to you about both of those centers. So let me see if I can't get this going now. Should be connecting, it's waiting. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, everybody. I'm Maureen McBride with the University of Speaking. Welcome, Maureen. How are you today? We're great. We're great Good. here. Awesome. Well, I know you have some great things in store for us, so I won't take too long. Um, what do you got in store for us today? Well, I'm going to show you a little bit about our space, how we're doing social distancing, so still allowing students to come in person, talk a little bit about some of our online support, and just encourage students to come in and get some help and let us support them in their academic endeavors. Awesome. All right, so this is our Writing and Speaking Center. We are in the PSAC on the third floor. And we want you to know that we are open. So you can come in in person. You can come in and use our online services. I'm going to show you a little bit about our space and talk about our services just as an entry point. One of the things that we really want students to know is we are a non-judgmental space. So 
one of the things we hear about as students are, I'm nervous about bringing writing in. I'm not so sure. I don't know what they're going to say, but we're really just here to help you. You'll be working with peers who are doing the same things you are. They get what it's like to be a student and what it's like to work on these projects. So you can come in with any project. It can be in biology. It can be a writing class, a core humanities, a CHS class, anything that includes writing or speaking or even reading projects we're going to help with. And it can be at any stage of the project. So if you get an assignment description, you're thinking, I don't even know how to get started. We love to help with brainstorming. Or you can think, I think I got some of this down, but I want to hear if the, I want to get some feedback. Is this organization working? Or maybe you're at the editing and proofreading stages. We help at any stage and we help with students who are first year students all the way through graduate students. So that's the first thing that I really want everyone to know. I'm going to show you a little bit about our space. So if you come on in with me. So this is our main area in the Writing and Speaking Center. You'll see that we have a computer lab. It has computers that you can use. Um, we also run some classes out of here sometimes. So you're seeing students in action right now. We have a resource wall full of resources. You can come in and get these and just pick them up, but they are also available on our website in electronic downloadable forms. So I'm gonna move into one of our rooms because one of the questions we've gotten is, how do we do in-person sessions right now while we have masks and we're social distancing? How does that work? So I'm gonna show you the space and kind of show you what that looks like. One of the things we're doing is we are projecting students' pictures or, or pictures of their papers onto whiteboard spaces. So in this room, there's a computer and a projector and then a whiteboard um, that it projects onto. So a consultant can be sitting in one part of the space and the student in another, they can still see the paper together and kind of work on it collaboratively. So this is one of the ways that we can offer in-person consultations. So the other types of support that we really provide include two forms of online support. We have what we call asynchronous support, which is really you submit a paper and we provide feedback in comments and in a letter. We also have what we call synchronous online, and that is like a video conversation and we can provide a discussion about that paper. So those are the types of support that we are offering. We just want to make sure students are knowing that we are open. We're excited to help everybody and we can kind of help with any project at any stage. Awesome, Maureen. Well, thank you so much for the tour. Um, I know we have some questions for you. So the first question that we have is, what do people need to be aware of as they're entering the facility? So everybody has to wear a mask. You can see I'm wearing a mask today. Um, we do have hand sanitizers. We are sanitizing all workspaces. We are social distancing. So we have some um, signage up to help students kind of know where, what's appropriate social distancing in our space. Um, so when they're coming in, as long as they're wearing a mask and they're um, using sanitizer and wiping their space down, it's a space for them to be using. Awesome. And then I know you kind of talked about some of the services that you're offering in your tour, but do you have anything else that you're providing that you'd like to talk about that we weren't able to see on the tour? Sure. So we are also doing some special events this um, semester. So we'll be doing an event called How We Write, where we invite a faculty member to talk about their writing process. How do they research? How do they write? So kind of demystifying that writing. Um, so that'll be happening later this fall. So we want students to be aware of that. Um, we also do an event called Writing the Self, which is really for um, some of our communities in the LGBTQ to think about what is it like to be a student on this campus in this moment. And so it's just a community where they get to write and kind of talk about that. And so we'll be promoting that. We also do an English conversation group for some of our international students as well. And then in spring, it's a little bit early, but in spring we mm -hmm. do a very unique event called the Human Library. So we always want people to be aware of kind of some of our special events as well. And just to know that we love to customize things. So if somebody has a request, hey, we wish you would. We want to know about that because we want to put that together for students. We want to be responsive to what students are looking for and how they want that to happen. Awesome. That sounds like you guys have some great stuff coming up. Um, do you, so I know you said you have like classes that you have and being held in your space. So I'm assuming that means you guys are offering in-person services right now. 
Absolutely. We are prepared. Our consultants work out of our space, so they are always here. So any available time on our schedule can be an in-person, an asynchronous online, or a synchronous online. Students have the choice to make at every given moment. So we're open 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Thursday, and then 8 to 4 on Fridays, and 2 to 8 on Sunday. So lots of choices for students. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are great. Um, do you have anything else that you'd like to add about kind of COVID related things or just in general that we didn't get to touch on? Um, I think we're just all really excited to be helping students again. And I think it's a tough time right now to navigate all these different educational moments. Um, we're trying to see them as opportunities to be creative and still meet students where they're at. And so we understand the choices that students are making, whether those are distance learning and using our services online or whether those are coming in and working in person. So your choice is the right choice for you and we're gonna help you with that. Awesome, well, thank you so much, Maureen. Thanks for all the information and for the tour. That was awesome, we appreciate it. Great. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Okay, so right now we're going to be moving over to our tutoring center, which is in the same building here. So we're just gonna have a short walk really quick. Again, I say short. So it is so, so, so convenient that both of these locations, by both I mean the writing and the speaking center, and the tutoring center are so close to each other. So you can kind of, you're, there was the, the entrance for the, the writing and speaking center. And then here we are now at the tutoring center. Hi, Marsha. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Good, so we're so thankful to have you on today. I appreciate all your time. Um, so I, I know that you are going to be giving us a cover, or a, you're covering the tutoring center, but you're gonna give us a tour today. So I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Welcome to the University Tutoring Center. Uh, there have been a few changes. And my first thing is I want to introduce Liz. She's one of my front desk students. Hi, Liz. <laughs> and the reason I'm, 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 uh, I'm introducing her is she's the only one here. But the other reason is if you have any questions about tutoring, you can either call us or go on to our Zoom uh, um, website. And then you can ask the questions. So if you're kind of lost, you're not sure how to make an appointment, what happens is they can get onto Zoom and they can show you their desktop so you know how to make the appointment. And as long as we're talking about appointments, Amelia, you know that we have two different kinds of appointments. One is the Zoom and another one is in person. Now Zoom, you'll be going on to the front desk and then we'll put you in breakout rooms with the tutor. The other one is in the in-person one and that's a little bit different because we have to worry about social distancing and sanitizing things. So right over here, we have a whole setup where when you walk in, the tutor will grab markers, a cloth, and a spray bottle so that they can clean afterwards. When they're finished with the session, they're gonna come in and drop everything here. The dirty markers will go in here, the, um, the cloths and the spray bottle will go in here so everything is clean. So you don't have to worry about that. On Zoom, as I said, you'll go to the front desk. The tutor will come in on the front desk, and they'll put you out in breakout rooms. Now we're just going to walk over, and I'll show you the areas that we're going to be using. Awesome. So if you guys are just joining us, we are getting a nice tour of the tutoring center. And this is Marcia, and she's going to show us around. And before you come in, you're going to be asked to use the QR code. So we can keep um, a record of who comes in and who is leaving so that if there's any problems with COVID, we know who's been here. So come on in. You'll be meeting your tutor at the front desk, and then they'll bring you into one of these rooms. And we've done social distancing with these. So, as you can see, we have one chair, which is usually over on the other side, but I'll be sitting to answer some questions. And the tutor will be on the whiteboard so that you're socially distanced there's no problem. You don't have to clean anything. Once you're ready to leave, the tutor will come over and clean everything and take all the material back to the front desk. So that's what we have. And in addition to that, you probably have heard about the Nevada Pass program, and that's peer assistance study sessions. And what we do with that is we pick classes that are traditionally difficult. We're talking about Chem 121, 122, uh, 341. We're talking about Accounting 201, engineering 241 and what we do is we put a past leader in the class so they know exactly what's happening in class and they work closely with the instructor and with us 
And then they do four hours of facilitated sessions. All of those are going to be on Zoom this semester. And then they're doing reviews. In fact, we have a few reviews this week. And those will all be done on Zoom. We have those on our website. They're on the instructor's uh, web campuses, so you can easily access them. And they're advertised all over the place. So there's, the leaders work with us and with the instructor to provide time for you to work through your problems so that you can understand them, so that when it's time for the test, you can do the work. So um, do you want to go for questions now? Yeah, let's do that. So thanks for all that great information. You guys have just so much support that you guys are able to offer students. And um, we just have a couple questions for you as, you know, kind of some specifics about the tutoring center. Um, what, what type of services or did you, did we not get to talk about any type of services that you offer like on your tour that you want to talk about for students? No, we have those two, but you know, if a student is having some difficulty and needs some help with suggestions on how to handle a class, they can always email me at urban, U-R-B-A-N, at unr.edu and ask me, you know, to, to make an appointment. And we can make an appointment and we can do it either on Zoom or in person and I can talk to them about their classes. That's awesome. And you guys obviously have in-person services right now. Um, so how do students, do students have to make an appointment for the tutoring center or can they just come in when you guys are open? They make appointments and they make that through Navigate for, okay. the, for, for the regular appointments, either in person or in Zoom. And they make those appointments on Navigate just like they would for their advisors. Awesome. They'll get an email and I believe a text too that reminds them that they have the appointments and then they can come in. Today we had uh, math and chemistry. But, okay. But we cover math, chemistry, um, business, foreign languages, and we cover all those. And we're still uh, looking for more tutoring, tutors and hiring more so that we could have as many classes as students need. And then, Marsha, what are your hours right now? We are open from 8 to 6, Monday through Thursday, and 8 to 4 on Friday. Okay. And we will be doing tutoring throughout those times. On occasion, though, the, um, the past reviews will be done on a Sunday afternoon or an evening, because that's when the majority of students are available. Yeah, that makes sense. And those and will then, be oh, in their Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> those will be announced in their classes ahead of time. And we always do those reviews two days in advance. And the oh, reason okay. we do that is so that you can find out what you don't know. And that's the important thing because you don't want to keep restuttering, studying stuff that you've already know. So what you want to do is focus on what you don't know and then go forward so that you're prepared for that exam. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any suggestions for students who are taking online classes this semester and, and how you know, they can be prepared or a good way that they can reach out for um, assistance? Well, you know, one thing with online classes, you really have to be organized. You have to set up a routine. So when you are looking at your classes, whether you have to be there or not, because some instructors have recorded it, some, some have not, but you need to put that on your calendar and consistently go to class at that time and find a space where you can work yeah. and you designate it. Cause you know, you can, you're telling your mind every time you go to that area that this is the time to work. When I was work, working remotely from home, I would use these glasses. You see, I have, I have quite a few pairs of glasses, <laughs> my work glasses. So what I would do is I put my work glasses, then go over, to the computer and start working and I knew I was working. I know a guy who fixes his hair every morning. He's an, he's an entrepreneur. So that's his cue. So you, have, you can set up a cue to say, this is the time I'm working. Set up that calendar and do it consistently, just as if you were gonna go to class, you're gonna do that now. And that helps because you know every time you say, well, I'll look at that video tomorrow. Well, I'll look at it later tonight. I'll look at it. And then all of a sudden, the exam is on Friday. You haven't looked at any of the, the uh, lectures yet, and you're jamming to get it done. Yeah. Really, that's not the best way to learn. So the best way to learn is to go through those videos on a regular basis, 
go through them and ask yourself questions about the material. One thing about the brain is it really, it's really a wonderful instrument. The only trouble is you have to learn how to use it. It likes to recognize things quickly, but remembering them is not so easy. So I don't know if you've ever done this, but you've taken, you have had an exam, you go through your notes and just keep going through the notes and going through, you sit down for the exam and there's a question on there and you say, I know that's on the fourth page of my note. And it's in the middle, but I can't remember what it was. Yes. And that's because your brain has recognized it. The way to make sure your brain is remembering it is to ask questions. Instead of just writing, going through it, say, okay, what are the stages of mitosis? What does each one of them do? And then if you can answer that, you're ready for the exam. Those are some awesome, awesome suggestions. Thank you so much, Marsha. So you covered a lot today. You talked about kind of how the tutoring center is working, your hours, appointments, Zoom, in person. Is there anything that you'd like to add that we weren't able to touch on today? I can't think of anything. <laughs> I mean, it's nice to be back on campus. Yes. I miss my dogs. But oh, it's... I know. The dogs. They're so sad that we're all back at work. Yeah. And so, but it's nice to see actual human beings. <laughs> and I know people are saying, I'm really tired of Zoom, but I took a week vacation. I was supposed to go back to Pennsylvania and could not go. Um, so I was home for a week with the dogs and they're, they're absolutely wonderful, but they're lousy conversationalists. <laughs> so I was Zoom that week and I couldn't wait to get back to it. Yeah. And I couldn't wait to get back to campus so I could see students and actually talk to them. Oh, well, we're so lucky to have you. I very much appreciate your time today and, and coming on to talk to us and give us all that wonderful information. You're so awesome. Thank you again. Well, thank you. Yeah, we'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone. So you guys just got an up close and personal uh, tour of the Writing and Speaking Center as well as the Tutoring Center. Those are both wonderful, wonderful resources for you to use as students. If you just feel like you need just a little bit of help with that coursework. So like Marcia said, you know, they cover everything from engineering to chemistry to biology. So if you're struggling or if you just don't even know where to start, um, please email her. Um, her email is urban at unr.edu and she's just a wonderful resource to utilize. So if you guys are just joining us, uh, welcome to Wolfpack Chat. Today's um, topic is academic success. So I know that this semester is a little bit different for everyone. You may be remote this semester. You may be remote um, and in person a little bit. And we all have those high flex classes. So today is just all about you guys as students. So our next guest is going to be Emily Borthwick Wong from the Advising Center. And I'm going to get her on right now. So bear with me while I let her in. Um, again, if you're just joining us, academic success, we are about to get some wonderful, wonderful information about um, advising. Hi, Emily. Hi, how are you? How are you? Oh, I'm good. good. How are you? Good. Good. How's Thank you so, so much for taking some time to be here with us today. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I know um, we have some lots of things to get into today. But first, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So my name is Dr. Emily Borthwick Wong, and I'm the interim executive director of university advising here at UNR. Awesome. Well, it was so nice to have you here. Um, so let's see here. We do have some questions for you that we're going to go ahead and get into. Okay. Um, how do I book an appointment with my academic advisor? Sure. So let's first talk a little bit about the structure of advising here at UNR. Um, so UNR has what's called decentralized advising, which means that advisors are located in each college. So your advisors are directly located in your college and they work with your faculty, they work with your dean. So each advising office is a little bit different because of that. So we're really proud of that. And we want to make sure that they have that close contact with the faculty and the curriculum in your college. So to sign up for an appointment, the best thing to do is to go to the advising website, which is unr.edu slash advising dash, um, or sorry, advising dash, 
um, academic. And so that's the best way to do it so that folks can really um, see exactly what their college does. Some, some advisors are broken up by alphabet. Some advisors are, they see everyone. So that's really the best place to go. And then they also tell you there how to make an appointment. Some appointments are booked directly on the website. Some go to navigate. And then sometimes you might get an email that just says like, hey, it's time to make an appointment. Go ahead and click this button. Um, so those happen throughout the semester, but that's the best way to figure that out. Awesome. Thank you for all that great information. And then I know, you know, we all think that we've got everything figured out and then you take your first class and you're like, oh, maybe this isn't for me. So how as a student do you change your major? So the thing to do would be to figure out what you want to change your major to. Um, so if you're like, I know exactly what I want to change my major to, that's really easy. You're going to go to the college where you want to change your major to meet with an advisor there, and they will help you to declare the new major and figure out a new schedule. Um, but if you're still kind of making decisions about that, um, the exploratory and pre-professional advising office can really, really help you with that. So we can walk you through the different pieces of exploration, help you to take some different assessments, work with maybe the career studios, um, and really kind of figure out what's your passion and what kind of drives you and then figure out how do we maybe backtrack if you know what career you want or how do we move you forward um, when we figure out um, the major and then figure out careers and things from there. Awesome. Yeah, I was an undecided student when I came in and I, man, I did those assessments and I took those classes and they're just awesome. It was kind of daunting to be an undecided student in college and have your friends be like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I've got it figured out. I'm going to do this. And then kind of just feel like you're floating around. So for all those undecided students out there, those are just wonderful, wonderful resources to have. I cannot suggest them enough. <laughs> yeah, and like national research, so students change their major an average of three times. So if you're thinking about changing your major, if you're thinking, you know, we're three weeks in and maybe this class isn't for me, it's totally a normal feeling and it's totally okay to change and explore and figure out what's gonna be your strong suit. Yeah, awesome. So then how, and this is probably going to be like a part question, but how do students meet their advisors? So this semester, all advising is happening virtually. We want to make sure that everyone is safe. We want to make sure that our students are safe and we want to make sure that our staff is safe. So all advising is happening virtually. Okay. And so, like I mentioned, each office really has its own unique style and personality. So each office is doing it a little bit differently. So if you go on and you check out the website, it'll show you that some offices say, are saying to give them a call and then they'll schedule you an appointment. Some offices are saying, send us an email, fill out a form with some questions and we'll get back to you within the hour. I would say that advisors are really cognizant of making sure that we get back to you that day. And so we are sure that we are you know, contacting folks, making all those connections. We never want a student to be like, who's my advisor and when are they going to contact me? Yeah. And um, in our new virtual kind of uh, situation, we want to make sure that folks are getting answers as quickly as possible. So we're all aiming for the same day. And then Emily, so when students are meeting virtually, do they meet through Zoom or is it like, does each college have kind of their own thing or what should students expect for those? Yeah, so most meetings are happening via Zoom and most times you will get a link from your advisor and if you schedule that appointment via Navigate, a lot of times you'll just get that link through that appointment schedule or you'll, they'll send you a follow-up email that says, here's my personal link. So all of those things are happening. Also, for some students, they don't want to meet on Zoom and we're happy to meet over the phone. We're happy to answer okay. emails. Um, we know that that Zoom's not everyone's cup of tea. So yeah, we're, we're here to do it in a variety of ways. Awesome, yeah, okay. And then, so this one's a little bit specific to the fall semester. So when is the last date that you can withdraw from a class for the fall semester? Well, it looks like, oh, there she's back. Okay, sorry, sorry. I think we, <laughs> technology, I know. Um, oh, okay, so you got my question. So okay, the last day, to withdraw from a class is for a, a 16 week class is October 27th. And so I noticed that you said there, you said 16 weeks. Is that how long the regular semester is? Is it 16? Yes. So mm -hmm. 
the university offers sometimes some classes that maybe aren't in that, you know, 16 week regular session, as we call it. So what suggestions maybe do you have for students who don't know, like, am I in a 16 week class? Am I in a 12 week class? Because then that has different dates, right? Definitely. So check your mind about it. It'll tell you how long your class is and the kind of the length of the dates. And so if it says October, uh, August, to December, you're in that 16 week class and you're good to go. Um, if it shows a shorter period, contact either admissions and records through QList or your advisor and they can let you know those dates. Awesome, yeah, okay, great suggestions. And then, oh, I cannot believe we're talking about spring semester already. It's crazy, I can't believe we are, we're ready. <laughs> <laughs> so when do students typically select their classes for the spring semester? So students typically select their spring classes in November, and that is gonna be remaining the same this term. So I know that there's been so many unique challenges this semester, but we wanna start bringing some consistency and that will not change. So students will still be enrolling in November. So you'll be hearing from advisors about enrolling um, and getting that information out um, you know, fairly soon. The schedule of classes will be available on October 1st, like it usually is, and in there there's gonna be a ton of information about all of the instructional modalities. So you're going to see the same instructional modalities that you did this fall um, and they will be in the spring as well. And so you'll know like, hey, how is my class going to be structured? You're going to have that information when you sign up for classes. Yeah, definitely. And then I know sometimes uh, just working from admissions records from experience, sometimes students get confused what we call an enrollment appointment. Um, so do students have to, when they get their enrollment appointment, which admissions and records will send to you, do they have to like be there for that appointment or is that just their time in my Nevada? So that's their time in my Nevada. So you should have your advising appointment before your enrollment appointment. So you want to make sure that you have that appointment, you know, in, um, October before your November date and then on your enrollment um, appointment, that's when you'll sign up in My Nevada and you'll, you know, have all your list of classes. You know, you should have your classes all the way in your shopping cart already so that it can be a really smooth process for you. Awesome. And then, so you kind of touched on it just a little bit, but if we could maybe dive into what classes will look like for the spring semester. Um, so I think that I mentioned like classes are going to look similar. We don't, we're still working out all of the details. We want to make sure that we have the most updated information from all of the critical, pe you know, all the critical people, the um, county health district, the CDC, you know, the university, Nevada in general. So we're trying to make sure that we gather all of that right now so that come October 1st, we're able to present a as solid as a plan as possible, but we're really looking to provide consistency across the terms. Awesome. And then is there anything, excuse me, is there anything else that you'd like to add today that we weren't able to, we didn't discuss in those questions, anything you can think of? The biggest thing is just be in touch with your advisor, you know, know who your advisor is. I know that they've reached out to you in the past. So look through those emails, go on the website, find your person. Um, and that person's really there to support you and to give you as much um, information and guide you through all of this and will provide you, you know, as up to date information as possible and we'll get you everything you need to know but just be in contact with your advisor. And if something's going wrong this term, let's say that you, you know, are exposed and you need to be out or um, you know something else happens within your family or you trip and fall and break your toe call your advisor you know email them reach out to them they're gonna be an awesome resource that can connect you to a lot of people get you the support that you need and really they're your person they're your true leader so use them they want to be there for you awesome well I very much appreciate your time today and giving us all that wonderful information um, yeah Nice to see you. I have, I've never officially met you. So no, nice I know we've emailed wonderful. a whole bunch of times. So it's nice <laughs> to meet you in person. Thank you so much. We'll chat with you later. All right. Have a great day. All right. You too. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone. So um, we got lots of wonderful information today. I know I've said that a lot, but I just think that this is such a wonderful thing for you guys to be able to know as students that these are just these wonderful resources that are out here for you. So today um, we covered the Writing and Speaking Center, the Tutoring Center, 
And then we got some information about the advising center. So make sure that you are not afraid to use those resources as a student. I know it can be a little bit daunting, probably the, you know, the first time that you go into the tutoring center, you may not know what you're expecting. But as you can see here, we have all these wonderful people, people who are here to welcome you. They're here to help you. We want to make sure that you feel supported as a student. So go, go forth, use those resources. And thanks so much for tuning in today. And we will chat with you later. See ya.